Before we jump into the episode today, I want to share something with you from my heart. First of all, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I really can't tell you how much your support means to me. We've been doing the podcast now for almost four years. I can't even believe it. And I'm so grateful for each and every single one of you that listens, shares an episode with your friends, sends me a DM or a text message letting me know how an episode resonates with you or any aha moments. Seriously, I couldn't be more grateful to be able to create this podcast. It has been such a blessing in my life and I love hearing the ways it's been able to provide value in yours as well. One thing you might not know is how much work it takes to be consistent with a podcast. In fact, did you know that the majority of podcasts don't make it past episode number 10? And we are well, 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 well beyond that. And it's just a lot thinking of the episodes, recording them, editing them, managing the guests, making sure that everything runs smoothly and gets uploaded consistently and regularly. And so that's why I have created an amazing opportunity for you to support the podcast monetarily. And in exchange for that, you will get exclusive premium subscriber content. So for as little as $3 a month, you can become a premium subscriber subscriber of the podcast. And every month I will upload new voice guided workouts and breathwork meditation audio for you. So that way you can work out with me coaching you in your ears. You can also take a moment to reduce your stress and relax and come down and ground down with one of my breathwork audios. So if that is on your heart to support the podcast for as little as $3 a month to become a premium podcast subscriber, I can't tell you how much that means to me and the growth of this podcast. I appreciate you. If you're interested, click the link in the description, become a premium podcast subscriber, new content every month. And while supplies last, I'll send you an exclusive podcast coffee mug so you can have your self-love and sweat coffee every morning. I appreciate you. Now let's get into the show. Welcome to Self Love and Sweat, the podcast, the place where you'll get inspired to live your life unapologetically, embrace your perfect imperfections, break down barriers, and do what sets your soul on fire. I'm your host, London Souza. Hey friend, it's me, London Souza, online lifestyle transformation coach. I help people all over the world just like you who know they are meant for more, get their mind right and their body tight and go from crazy busy to crazy happy. And hey, if it's our first time meeting, welcome. So happy to have you. And if you've been with us for a while, it's so great that you're here too. I'm really excited to share this episode of the Self Love and Sweat podcast with you. Hey, I want to tell you quickly about two ways that you can get connected beyond the podcast to up-level your health, your life, your fitness, reach your goals, but also support the podcast as well. So the first option is our self-love and sweat monthly members only meetup. We meet up on the last Saturday of the month on Zoom for 90 minutes to cover some important topics, to answer your questions, and then to also do a workout together. It's a great way to have that support, have that accountability, get supercharged and get reminded that there are other people all over the world on this journey of self-love and sweat and you don't have to do it alone. You can join your first month for only a dollar using code selflove1 at checkout and then it's $27 a month after that. So you go to lifelikelondon.com forward slash monthly, use the code selflove1 at checkout to try us out, test it out for only a dollar for your first month and then you can be on board to listen to the podcast, join up on the meetups, and just really feel like you're connected and thriving on this journey to reach your goals. The second option is our Strong at Home for Women eight-week dumbbell-only workout plan. We have women all over the world 
getting stronger from the inside out right at home, right? So we're ready to take action to get stronger despite the circumstances of the world. And we know that we're not about to do that alone. So embark on this eight-week journey with us. You can go to lifelikelondon.com forward slash strong at home. You can pick up your eight-week plan. And the exciting thing is that every eight weeks, we open it up, myself and my co-coach, for VIP all-access coaching with us. So not only do you get the plan, but you get Zoom fireside chats with us. You get an exclusive way to chat with us anytime so you can ask your questions, share your progress. Um, And we're always continuing to stay connected and motivate and inspire each other on our journey to get stronger, no matter what that means for us. So if you know that you're meant for more, you're ready to get stronger from the inside out, and you're just like, yes, I need a plan and some structure, something to tell me what to do. I know I'm ready, but I need that coaching. I can't do it alone. We are here for you. You can go to lifelikelondon.com forward slash strong at home, pick up the plan, figure out when our next VIP all access registration is opening so you can get that support and guidance. And the third thing, I said there was two, but the third thing is you can do both. You can join us for those monthly meetups. You can be there for the eight-week program. You know, this coaching and this support is here for you. We want to get you real results that last so you never have to start over again. And so you guys are awesome. Enjoy this episode. Get connected. Self-love and sweat, friends. My next guest is Keely Brown. She is a Georgia native, and after gaining a few pounds, okay, maybe 20, during her college years, a breakup pushed her into a new relationship with the gym. She competed as a bikini bodybuilder from 2016 to 2018, and she vlogged her journey to the stage on her YouTube channel, Workouts by Keely. She is currently a wife and mom and loves helping mamas lose their baby weight and snap back. Welcome to Self Love and Sweat the Podcast, Keely. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. I'm so glad that you reached out. I'm so thankful for this connection this year. And I know that we have so much to, um, so much value to drop here today. I'm so happy that you've decided to join us. And I know that I just scratched the surface a little bit when I read these few sentences about you. So I would love to just pass the mic over to you to start to tell us a little bit more, give us a little bit of meat on the bones to that journey. And yeah. Okay, awesome. So my journey started in 2011. Uh, My college sweetheart, we dated all through college. He cheated on me and he broke up with me. And at that moment, I assumed that it was because I had gained, you know, the college, the college weight, right? The relationship weight. Um, So I made a decision. I was like, I can pick up a spoon or I can pick up a dumbbell. And I started hitting the gym. (laughs) And ever since then, I've just been in love with it. In 2014, I got certified. Um, I played around with different diets, vegetarianism, veganism. I did Whole30. Um, I've been a group fitness instructor since 2014. Uh, I got married in 2015. That was a whole nother weight loss journey in itself. Um, And then in 2016, I got wrapped into the bodybuilding world and I started competing as a bikini bodybuilder. I did that for about almost two years and it kind of sucked the life out of me, to be honest. And I let it take over my life and it put a strain on my relationship with my husband and I decided to step away. And that's when I got into yoga and really feeling good. I think my perspective on fitness changed back then on looking good versus I just want to feel good. Um, And then 2019, I got pregnant. I worked out my entire pregnancy. I had a wonderful pregnancy. But I ended up having an emergency C-section and that scared me. I'm going to be honest. Um, I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to lose my baby weight. That turned out to not be true. Uh, I took my time and I lost all my body weight and about all of my baby weight, excuse me, in about six months. And now I'm on a mission to help other mamas achieve their potential and lose that baby weight and snap back. So that's where I am today. I love it. 
I love the way that you, I mean, you said this so concisely, but um, one of the things that you shared with me when we first started chatting about doing this podcast episode is that you're like, I'm the woman of multiple transformations. I've gone through a lot. And I think just from that little quick uh, tidbit that you shared with us, we can really like feel that and understand it too. And so I would love to just like start from the beginning because I feel like anytime we share our stories, it's not just about us. Every other people see it in uh, see themselves in our stories. And I, um, you know, I think that especially the first one, all of them, but especially the first one, everybody listening can relate in one form or another, whether you're a woman or a man listening to, or like whoever's listening, um, that feeling of rejection from a breakup, going through a breakup, and then thinking that it has to do with the way that you look. Right. And I think that we've all been there. So let's talk a little bit about that. And that seemed to be like that first kind of, yeah, a shift, if you will. So take us there. Yeah. So when we first chatted about this, I think you mentioned the term or the phrase, I let myself go. And that was initially my thought, like I did something wrong. I should look a specific way to be able to keep a man And that's ridiculous, right? If he loves me, he loves me, whether I'm big or small. Of course, I want to be healthy. I want to look good. But he didn't leave me because I gained 20 pounds. But 20-something-year-old me thought that, hey, society says women need to look a specific way. I don't look that specific way. Therefore, he left me. And it was just a cocktail of emotions. And I was like, I can just keep eating and say F this and give up. Or, you know what? I can improve myself. You know what? I can do better. And then I eventually realized it had nothing to do with me, right? It had nothing to do with me gaining weight. It was a relationship thing, but it turned into, oh my God, I love working out. I love feeling this way. I like looking better. I like the attention. I'm going to be honest. A lot more guys paid attention to me because I was out of of a relationship and they literally, some told me, you know what? It looks like you're taking care of yourself. And I was like, wow, I didn't even think about it like that, but just Going through that process, it it totally changed me. Obviously, it was my first transformation, but it just made me think about so many things that I believe that were not true. And that's been my entire entire journey of all these things that you think are true are not true. They're just a belief. I know, right? It's that unlearning (laughs) process, I call it sometimes. It's like, well, time to change the tape just when you got used to it and you're ready for that playlist. You know it's (laughs) predictable. You know what song's coming next. It's like time to flip that switch and that script there. But, um, okay. So you went from, you know, feeling like it was your physical, um, you know, the way that you looked and you mentioned too, and we talked about this. Yes. Like I let myself go. A lot of people say, yeah, he let me, you know, he or she left me or whatever this ended. I let myself go. I wasn't taking care, you know, and there might be some ownership to that too. And that's very important and all of that, but it's really like, that's not the, um, the end all be all and it shouldn't be there. But how did you kind of like unpack that a little bit more? So, um, was it overnight or like, you know, obviously it wasn't overnight. It was a compounding effect, but was, what were some things that you used, uh, in your toolbox besides fitness and whatever to help kind of cultivate that confidence and like, Hey, you know what? Like had nothing to do with that. It was just like, we're we're at different seasons, different people learning new things. Um, what did you bring into your uh, space to help foster that healing? You know? Yeah. So at, at that specific time I binge watched sex in the city and I don't know if that was therapeutic (laughs) or what it was, but watching four independent women going through dating and just, I know it's fiction. I know it's TV, but it just helped me think like, it's not just you, like other people have relationship issues, really leaning on at my time, the room, my roommates, they were all dating and going through things, just talking about what was going on with me and getting feedback and leaning on other people. Um, to hear their stories, again, going to the gym, focusing on myself for once. I hadn't focused on myself in years, right? I was in this relationship. I was catering to a guy. I'm in college. I'm doing all these things, but never stopping to say, hey, what does Keely want? What does Keely like to do? What makes Keely happy? Like I had to stop that. That instance made me stop and realize, hey, I'm not paying attention to myself and I need to take a step back and think about what I like. Now, this is 20 year old me. Of course, I like different things now, but like just taking that pause really helped me at the time, you know, I was upset about the breakup, but it, it helped me. It literally changed my life. Mm -hmm. So it's safe to say like, you're thankful for that. I am. I'm very thankful for it. 
yeah, now. It's super, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I know. Um, you know, but there's something to be said too, you know, in, in the terms of being thankful for it. Um, I shared this with you a little bit and I haven't like fully unpacked this sharing on social media or podcast or whatever, but I have no problem sharing at least a little piece of, of what, um, kind of I went through last year with a breakup and it's like, you get to a point where, and I appreciate this too, it's like the ownership has to be there. So when you go through a breakup, it's like you have two choices of like pointing the finger at them and that they were this, that they should have done this, this, and this. And there might be some validity to that too. It takes two to tango. But the only thing that I could control was like, okay, what could I have done better? How could I have shown up better? What version of myself, you know, with all the learnings that I have here, do I want to bring to that next relationship to whatever that might look like there? And so um, it seems like even though, yeah, you were young and I didn't do this in early breakups, you know, like I had a few other like semi-serious relationships before this last one, um, but I never took time for self-reflection. I was just more kind of like, okay, well, you know, that didn't work. And like, I'll just kind of like hang out with my friends on to the next one whatever. And I noticed these patterns of like, Mm -hmm. oh, your relationships only last X amount of time. And these are like kind of the fizzling points. Mm -hmm. Uh, It could be all them, but it's probably some of you too, London. So ownership (laughs) there. And I've been unpacking that a lot. It's been so fun, Uh, but I love it. You know, like I really want to, yeah, I love to explore that. Um, It's something that I've gotten used to doing. And and I see the benefits of over time of taking that ownership and reflecting there. Um, But what were some things that you would say that you learned about yourself, that you had some ownership beyond just saying like, Oh, well, it wasn't about what I looked like. That was his deal. But like, what were some really key improvements for you're like, Hmm. Yeah. I could see how, if that, if I let that go, it could just really, you know, show up again and again in my life. What were some things that you, um, like in your, let's say first wave of transformation, uh, felt? <laughs> um, definitely setting boundaries. I am an only child. I haven't touched on that. I'm an only child. So I'm a people pleaser. Like I like making other people happy. And I thought giving him whatever he wanted would make him happy and would keep him. And that was not true. I like, I let him run all over me. I had no walls. If you want to do it, let's do it. And that's not respecting myself. That's not respecting him. That's not respecting the relationship. And I didn't, I couldn't have realized that until he left me. Like I I was literally like, I'm giving you everything I have. It must be because I'm fat, right? It must be because I've gained weight because you're getting everything you want. Completely not true. I had no boundaries. I had no backbone. I had I had trouble saying no. I still have trouble saying no. This is something I'm still working on. I'm still unpacking. Like this was not an overnight thing. I'm still working on saying no. But at the heart of it, I realized you can give someone the world and they'll still leave you. They'll still, you know, run all over you. So that was the main thing I learned. Like mm-hmm. I need to start saying no and I need to start expressing what I do want. Uh, it, it was his show, right? It, it was all about my boyfriend. It was all about him. And there was nothing that there, I, it's like, I wasn't there. It's like, I was a guest star in my own relationship. So mm. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for sharing. Thanks for opening up of and being course. vulnerable there. I think we all can relate on how icky and complicated and whatever that might be when it comes to going through breakups or shedding relationships of any kind. And, um, Yeah. I appreciate that there. Okay. So moving forward after that breakthrough and after realizing, Hey, you know what? Um, you know, it's not about what I look like. It's what it's about what I feel like. And you said you went into the, was the next step kind of more into the bikini competitions and and that type of world of meal plans and training plans and all that. Was that kind of that next segue into there? Yeah, definitely. So like, uh, 2012, 2011, 2012, I started going to work, um, and I gained a, you know, a little weight there. Um, so I was like, well, I need a routine. I need to figure out this diet thing. I need to figure out nutrition. So in around 2013, I tried whole 30, had a lot of success with that. Everyone at work noticed everyone in my family noticed. I was like, okay, I'm onto something here. I think it was the first time I could actually visibly see my abs. I never had like weight issues, but that was the first time I saw like washboard abs. And I was like, okay, I like this. I'm going to stick with this, uh, transitioned into vegetarianism. I felt like the meat, I was eating too much meat. So I changed my diet completely, then tried uh, veganism. And I was like, okay, this is too extreme. Um, so then I just kind of went to, I'm eating what makes me feel good. And I was really paying attention to how my body reacted to food. Um, and then in 2015, 
uh, 2014, I got engaged. 2015, uh, it was the wedding. So like I'm working out to make sure I can fit into my dress and look good. And then 2016 is when I took the leap into bodybuilding. And that was because I met other bodybuilders. I had seen it. I had heard about it, but I didn't know how to really get into it. Um, so my photographer for our engagement photos was into bodybuilding and he connected me with a woman that was a bodybuilder. Uh, she's my age. Um, but connecting with her, talking with her just made it easy. I started training with her trainer, entered my first show. I won my first show. And I feel like that kind of messed me up too, <laughs> because it gave me a big head, right? Like, I'm like, oh, I don't even know what I'm doing. And I won this show. And so all 2017, I competed, I went to nationals and it was just, it was a year of bodybuilding and it was not a year that I was focused on my marriage. So I knew in that, at that point, at the end of 2017, I was like, I can't do this anymore. It's taking a mental toll on me, all the dieting and the pressure to look a specific way. And just thinking I need to look how I look on stage every day. And it's not realistic. There's a huge disconnect there. Um, but that's when that meal, meal prep, meal planning, all that was 20, like, 15 to 2018. Yeah. And what I hear you saying there and what people say all the time, probably to you too, is like you were navigating that all or nothing mindset that like I'm in all the way or I'm all the way in. There's like, oh, yeah. you know, you just are so focused. It's like a top that's spinning and you're in flow, but all of, you know, when it stops and you're leaning fully into one section yep. there of just fitness, just workouts, just rigid meal plans, just like yes. narrow focus there and not taking the time to look up and like for lack of better you know, phrases like smell the freaking roses and see what's around yeah. you and those types of things, appreciate the relationships that are around you, foster, you know, other things that are going to, you know, build character personal and professionally and all that. It's so easy to get blindsided, you know? And so, um, that all or nothing mindset and that navigation, I love what you shared too, because you're like, I tried vegetarian. Then I went whole 30, whatever. A lot of people will say things like, Oh, I tried a variety of diets that didn't work. No, I want to hear what you did. You tried this, <laughs> you tried this, it worked. Yeah, you liked yeah. it. That was too extreme. Um, the details of navigation for me are super interesting. And I think make everybody feel like, okay, like all the things that are dancing around in my head are dancing around in other people's heads too. And so that's mm -hmm. why I, I appreciate the, uh, the way that you kind of shared that there. And so that all or nothing mindset. And, you know, I ask, I ask myself this a lot and I just kind of, it's one of those questions that I just kind of like ponder. And I've, I've asked a few people either on the podcast or just in conversation about it, who are in our space is like, could you have fully found your, like, for lack of better words, like balance or center or line or whatever, without those moments of extremes of knowing what black and white are, can you really find that gray and finding gratitude in a lot of that too? So that all or nothing mindset kind of tell us about that, um, a little bit more in terms of fitness and relationship and whatever, and how you were kind of able to find that wiggle room. So no, I don't, I, I, Again, I appreciate my entire journey and I have no regrets. I don't think I would be the person that I am without any of it. I don't think I would be where I am today without doing the bodybuilding and understanding how extreme it can get, how much it can take over your life, um, how it's just for a specific day and time. And it is not a lifestyle in that you're not going to look shredded every day. And I think part of me, my journey was realizing those people don't look like that every day. Nobody looks like that every day. And now I consciously say things on my Instagram page about how, hey, I'm sucking in guys. Hey, I'm, you know, I'm holding my breath. I don't look like this every day at 10 p.m. on a Friday. My stomach is not flat, right? Like <laughs> I've eaten all day. I, you know, I'm bloated, whatever. But it's not realistic to hold yourself to a standard that is not real. And I would not have understood that concept without doing the bodybuilding, without the extreme eating and thinking something's going to make me fat or something's going to make me, you know, look a specific way. It's just not true, but you can't understand it until you experience it. And I'm all about experiencing things, trying different things. Like I said, with the diets, I'll try it. I'll give something 30 days. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I, I can move on with my life. And now I, I don't have to wonder, right? Mm -hmm. So test it out. See if it works for you. Give it a go. Don't let someone else tell you that this needs to be your path or your way and be exactly. able to, but that takes, yeah, that, that ownership, confidence, courage to really say like, this is what works for me, you know? Yeah. Um, 
I was never in bikini competitions. I never did. Um, but I definitely trained like a bodybuilder, like for mm-hmm. sure. I had a couple of friends that did competitions that I trained them and worked with them a lot too, would like put the glaze on them before they stepped on stage. Um, yes. but you know what? I really appreciate kind of that bodybuilder mentality of structure and results driven and doing the little tweaks of like extra repetitions, little bit decrease of rest time, extra intensity, oh, yeah. like whatever oh, yeah. to really manipulate that outcome. Like for me, there's certain seasons of my life where that's super sexy and I'm super into that. And then other times we want to kind of flow there. So how is that kind of bodybuilder mindset? Let's sometimes it gets a bad rep and I, and I get it. There's a lot of things going down, but I think it's great for like strategies, systems, accountability, and then seeing the compounding effects over a month, over six weeks of like doing the work and, and, and piling that up there. So how did that help you? So I'm, I'm going to piggyback off what you just said. People, it gets a bad rep. And at that time in 2018, where I was like, I can't do this anymore. I was really upset. I was damn near depressed, right? Like I was like, oh my God, this is my whole life. And it's not true. And you're right. It is excellent for a season. And that's where the line is drawn. If you think that you need to live your entire life in this way forever, it will not work. If you know, I'm doing this until August. I'm going to focus, get this done and move on. It's perfect. And it did create a lot of discipline in me. And I've learned a lot from it. And I know if I set my mind to something, I can achieve it. And that's what you learn from actually doing it and experiencing it. The issue just comes up when you believe this is me for the rest of my life. I'm never going to eat any Oreos. I'm never going to go out. I'm never going to, I'm going to take my food everywhere. I'm going to, it's like, no, <laughs> even pro, but like, I know, you know, I have pros, they don't live like that all year. Like they, they have off season. They have times where they take a break, where they take a step back and they do different things. But believing that you need to live like this forever is where people get into trouble. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Those life in extremes. And, you know, I can't speak for men, but like for women, we have different phases and different cycles. And sometimes where I'm a bit more bloated and sometimes where I'm like, damn girl, like you got some abs going on there looking good, you know, and we just kind of like ebb and flow and let our body work with us instead of working against us, you know? Um, and yeah, to your point of, you know, the kind of all or nothing mindset. And then you said you were like, you won and you're like, okay, this is great. I'm on a high, like, let's do it. Let's roll. Um, did you, okay. So after that, did you compete again and then like lose some shows? Is that what happened? Okay. Yes. Yeah, I didn't win again. <laughs> like- first, first <laughs> and last there, you know, but, um, you know, there's, there's the post competition, like blues, there's the post marathon blues for people who are training for a marathon and then it's done. And it's like, so that's why I love how fitness can transcend into other areas of our lives and be like a example and a tool and a way for us to show up and like put in the repetitions, put in the work and get results and then be like, okay, in other areas of my life, if I air quotes, put in the repetitions, put in the work, I'm going to inevitably see those results too, as well. So I love, um, just using fitness there more now as a tool. How are you able to pivot from this, uh, bodybuilding competition, uh, lifestyle then to foster your marriage and your relationship and be able to rebuild there? So, um, 2018 and 2019, uh, I think we were selling our house. Like we had moved back into the city. So it was just a good time for us to spend time together. We went out more. We had, you know, this is pre COVID obviously, but we went out to eat. We, we go just doing things together. I think we took an improv class together, like just rebuilding that relationship. Uh, like I said, in 2018, I got into yoga I don't know if you heard of Lady Dork, uh, Sanai, she's awesome. I started following her and she went on tour and it was all about just thinking, meditating, doing yoga, breathing, really centering myself. And again, going back to what does Keely want? What does Keely like? Like bringing it full circle back to that. After doing the bodybuilding thing, it was like, okay, I need to focus on family, myself, my friendships, all that. And then, okay, now we're trying to have a baby. So you know, focusing on my body. Am I ready for that? Am I ready for my life to completely change? Um, so that's what happened 2018 to 2019. Yeah. 
Got it. Yeah. Just navigating. Like you said, what are your, my priorities now? Is my priority going to be being super, super lean? No, because I want to have a baby and that type of body is way different and what we need to do and prioritize and foster during that parts of our, those parts of our lives are very different and um, taking the time to kind of pivot and, um, you know, root down and, and make that shift there is, is awesome and very courageous. And I've worked with a lot of women and more and more, I see that where they're like, yeah, I'm getting ready to have kids. And like, I, I need to, I want to, you know, it's not just about like, when can I get pregnant and when are my most fertile days or whatever, but like, I want to make sure am I feeding myself healthy, consistently getting up to that, making sure I'm staying low stress, you know, just like a lot of different things that a variety that might be important to somebody getting prepared for um, pregnancy and things like that. And so how did mom life change it all? multiple transformations, all your metamorphoses and stuff, but this is really powerful and and a journey that so many women can relate to, or at least in my perspective, I'd say like, I love these stories from other women because I'm either like there have been there, or maybe this is like a few head steps, steps ahead. And I love Mm -hmm. learning through other women. That's like so amazing. So, um, how did that shift uh, your priorities and the way that you thought about health and wellness and fitness? So like you touched on, definitely changing my diet and trying to, I, my goal was to stay as low stress as possible during my pregnancy because the baby can feel your emotions and you're literally passing that on to the baby. So I was very cognizant of what I took in, what I watched. I didn't watch anything scary or anything that would stress me out. I tried to laugh, you know, not force myself to laugh, but look at something funny or just try and relax. And, um, the first trimester, totally exhausted. Uh, I didn't really work out. Uh, just, you're just tired. That first trimester, the baby is just draining the life out of you and you're excited and you can't tell anyone. So you're, I'm literally sleeping in the middle of the day. And it's like, what is wrong with you? And you can't tell anybody until you're 12 weeks just to be, you know, sure. Um, but then that second trimester, you're like on a high, it's like your baby moon. And I was working out and I was doing cardio. And at first I was a little apprehensive, but you know, my doctor was like, if you were doing it before, you're fine to do it after you're not high risk. There's no reason to be scared of anything. Of course, there are exercises that I could not do anymore. I'm not doing crunches, right? Like I have a belly. I'm not doing pull-ups. I'm not doing anything to put a strain on that area. But like, as far as running or anything else that I was doing, kept that up. The third trimester, I worked out. I was still teaching and uh, up until like 30 weeks. And then my feet started swelling and I was like, okay, I'm going to take a break. (laughs) But like just that whole time maintaining my stress levels and trying to stay happy and rubbing my belly. I literally rub my belly every day and I would, you know, oil it with coconut oil and lotion every night after a shower. And I talk to my belly and my husband would talk to my belly. And it's just like, nurturing that baby and bringing that baby into a happy and loving environment was my number one priority. Like I want him to feel wanted and welcome because we prepared and we waited and we want you here. And I wanted him to feel that. And I had a son. Uh, so he's here. He's almost two now, but yeah, that was my journey, my pregnancy journey. That's and so then, beautiful. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Now I was going to say that's really beautiful and such intention of bringing another human into the world. And that's, it's so great. And I, my follow-up question, unless you had anything else to add there, but would be like, how do you, we don't want to, of course, we don't want to use words, but it it gets uh, like this in a lot of households, but like diet, uh, you know, that will make you fat. You have to work out to, you know, all these things. How do you just foster like a healthy and fit uh, environment naturally in your household to make sure that you are the impact that he has on that type of thing versus like the world, you know, a leading by example. So telling him, you know, do as I say, not as I do just doesn't work. Right. Like if I'm over here, you know, eating salad and I'm scared and I'm like, Oh my God, if I eat this, I'm going to be fat. He's going to pick up on that. Even though he is a boy, like, but you know, there's a lot of emphasis on that happening with girls, but guys can get eating disorders as well. So just fostering that example, knowing that there's a balance, right? Like some days I eat pizza because that's what mommy wants and (laughs) she's going to eat it. And other days knowing, you know, for the 80% of the time I'm, I'm eating lean meats and trying to eat vegetables and fruit every day and just eating and doing everything that I want him to do. And leading by example is my number one way of influencing him, telling him to do things. He's not going to do it. If he sees me do it, he's more likely to do it. There you go. 
I love it. Right. And we're leading by example. How do you make, uh, now, how do you make time for you, yourself as a mom, uh, for your, you know, your workouts, your healthy routines, different things like that. And how much of a priority is that to you? It's a huge priority and I have a lot of help. So like I said, I'm a Georgia native. My mom is down the street. I'm an only child. So she was waiting on this grandchild. So my, my mom and my husband were very, very, very supportive of me getting back in the gym, focusing on myself, taking time for myself and encouraging me to ask for help. And that's what I had to learn how to do during this because I ended up having an emergency C-section and I was not myself um, after having my baby. I did not have postpartum depression, but I didn't feel like myself. My body was completely out of control, you know, with the hormones. And then I had major surgery so I could, you know, they're making you walk on day one and it's difficult and I'm trying to breastfeed. And I I was successful with breastfeeding. Thank goodness. I was able to breastfeed him for six months, but like, it's a complete shift. And without my mom and my husband's support, I I don't know what I would have done. I, you know, I wouldn't have made time for myself. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have left to go to the gym. I literally had anxiety that first day, (laughs) leaving him pumping to make sure he had milk and going to the gym. And they're like, go get out of the house. We've got this focus on you. And it got a little bit easier as time went on, but that first day mom guilt is real. Like you're like, Oh my God, I'm abandoning my baby. And it's not true. Your mother and your husband are there. It's his baby too, right? (laughs) It's not just your baby. (laughs) And I think too about like, I mean, I don't have, I don't have children, but I think about like when I was a kid too, like I loved spending time with grandma, my dad and the neighbors and my aunt, (laughs) like, and I love that, you know, your village was like ready. You know, they say they take, it takes a village. They were ready for you. Your, your tribe of people that we can't do it alone. And I work with a lot of women and I'm sure you do too, who come to you and it's like, they want to do all the things, but then at the same time, not ask for help. And then they wonder why they're maxed out and on a hamster wheel. And I, I mean, it looks, it's so clear, you know, in plain sight when we talk about it like this, but when you're in it, it's very, very different. And so I love that you shared that it was hard for you to ask for help too. Um, I've shared that a lot too, in, in different capacities, but it's just like, sometimes we just feel like we can just do everything on our own. And we're in this society that's like, you can do it by yourself. You don't need help, self-discipline, better routines. Yeah more motivation, yeah. la la la. It's like, no, <laughs> we need help. you know, we right. need people who are in our corner. And I use the analogy sometimes of like being in that boxing ring and like doing the thing, showing up in the arena, then coming back in your corner. And there's that one person who's like massaging you with spring in your ear, putting the ice <laughs> on your forehead putting the, yes. the whatever cream they put on you. Punch it, slide <laughs> off. Yeah. They're like, right, you know, and you're like, I have a wonky tooth, but you're like, I'm going after it, you know, and like, I'm leaning into those people. I know it makes me laugh, but like, oh gosh, those years that I spent, like not utilizing people who like truly cared about me and were really yeah. like mission driven in their own lives and wanted to see what's best for me. Like, gosh, but God, and are that, you know, not, no looking back and just, you know, appreciating those learnings there. Um, yeah for sure. Um, so when it comes to sharing on social media, do you share a lot about your son and your family and kind of, how do you navigate those boundaries there, um, as well, just like whatever works for you. I know there's no right or wrong answer, but how have you navigated that space? Mostly because I'm interested. (laughs) (laughs) So I, like I said earlier, I'm an open book. So I shared everything. Um, my son is definitely on my page when I did start back working out, I worked out with him and I intentionally did that because I wanted moms to know you can work out with the baby because everyone doesn't have the support system. I had a lot of people don't, uh, the number one thing I hear is I don't have time. You know, I have kids. I can't take 30 minutes away from my kid. And, you know, I'm going to mention this later, but my snapback guide is an at-home workout. Like you can do things at home with the baby or with the baby in a carrier right next to you. It doesn't take two hours Take 20 minutes, do what you can and move on with your day. Like, but yes, to answer your question, my son BJ yeah. is all over my page. <laughs> I love it. And it takes that example of seeing like, oh, she just like picked him up and like did some squats. Like your baby weighs something, you know, when exactly. I first started on my, um, like, fitness as a career journey. I did a lot of in-home personal training mobile at people's houses and stuff too. And there'd sometimes there'd be kids, you know, running all over the place as mom, we're in the living room, getting stuff done, you know, grab the two-year-old, sit them on her yep. lap, do some <laughs> tricep dips, you know, put, yep. you know, I was like trying to help that process and facilitate yeah. kind of that flow a little bit. Um, and, but just seeing that 
is powerful. Right. It's one thing to say right. like, okay, if you don't have time as a busy mom, you can make time. Okay. But like, what is making time look like? And exactly. I need it to be just as messy as I know it is in my brain, because I'm going to figure it out too. But you know, um, <laughs> really bringing that to life there is really, really great. Awesome. So cool. I love everything that you've shared with us today. It's been so powerful, um, to hear, a you know, a power woman just kind of so often, people feel like they have to start over when they make a mistake or they have this realization that maybe their old ways of doing things, unlearn something, whatever. I hear that a lot. Like, Oh, I just have to keep, I always start and stop. I'm you know, and I often say, you know, I want to help you never have to start over again. And I love, um, your portrayal of all your different transformations and not seeing it as like, Oh, I had to start over, start from scratch, whatever. It was like, no, I had this evolution. I took like this onion layer off and this yep. onion layer off. <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of continued on that. So, um, yeah, touch on that a little bit of what that means for you to see that as transformation and then let us know about all your fantastic, uh, programs and ways that mamas, um, after, right. It's post after their baby can it's snap back yeah. and get it all yeah. back in order, <laughs> right? the, the messy, beautiful messiness. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I do frame it as a transformation versus starting and stopping because starting and stopping can be so defeating, right? It's like, oh my God, I failed again. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't get it right. And it's like, none of us know what we're doing. We're all experimenting. We're all just experiencing different things at different times. Nobody has the answer and nobody knows, you know, exactly what they're doing, but you try it anyway. And that's the thing. Like I didn't know anything about bodybuilding, but I tried it anyway and I liked it. And sometimes you try things and you don't like them. I love, but I, again, I love looking at it as I'm just experiencing this for the moment. I can learn something from it, whether I like it or not. And I take it and I move on to something else that I like doing. It's not starting and stopping. I'm not failing. It's just, I'm learning and I'm moving on. That's it. Just keep moving forward. I love and it. So yeah, let me touch on um, the, the programs that I offer. Again, my Instagram and YouTube are all Workouts by Keely and I wore the shirt, you know, just, uh, I know the podcast can't see it, but uh, Workouts by Keely. <laughs> and uh, linked in my bio is uh, a link to my snapback guide. It is a, there's 90 days worth of workouts in there. Um, there's meal guidance. I don't tell you exactly what to eat. I add some recipes to help guide you along. Again, every mama is different. Breastfeeding mamas need more calories than non-breastfeeding mamas. Um, but all of the workouts can be completed at home. You don't need any equipment. You can add equipment or your baby to add a little weight and to mix things up. They are all conscious of women that have diastasis recti or separation of your abs um, after pregnancy. It's very common. Um, so there are no planks, no sit-ups, none of those activities that put a strain on your stomach. It's safe, friendly. There's beginner, intermediate, and advanced workouts. And it's all wrapped up in a little bundle, again, linked in my bio. And I, I believe that London is going to link it in the podcast for you guys, but and I also do weekly at home challenges in my stories. If you follow me on uh, Instagram, uh, start those up usually Monday and wrap them up on Friday. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, yeah, I'm, I know your programs are absolutely fantastic and our mamas are in good hands afterwards. Um, and having those specifics based on exactly where you are, having that plan um, and that guidance that meets you where you are is just so super powerful. Um, my word of 2021 was connection. And so I definitely want to inspire everybody listening, get connected with Keely on social media, all of her channels. I'll link everything in the podcast show notes and the links below, whether you're watching this on YouTube or listening um, with your ears, um, on the podcast, um, definitely great to, uh, connect with you. And I'm just so thankful for what you're doing, um, in this space and your message and your growth and everything like that. So go ahead and follow her, you guys. And thank you, Keely, so much for being here. Thank you for having me, London. This was great. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Self Love and Sweat, the podcast. Hey, do me a favor. Wherever you're listening to this podcast, give us a review. This really helps a lot. And share this with a friend. I'm only one person. And with your help, we can really spread the message of self love and sweat and change more lives all around the world. I'm London Souza reminding you that you deserve a life full of passion, presence, and purpose fueled by self love and sweat.